I've won and lost enough jobs now to know like the writing's on the wall. But I'm not happy with the. I'm, I'm not, not happy with that. the answer. You're totally killing it, and you're transforming yourself and your company, and affecting the lives of your partners and your wife and your family. This is wonderful. What can I do to help you get to the next big milestone? So I'd love to know how to maybe have more of a predictable business okay. and possibly um, how can I scale so that I have more time uh, to do the weird random things that I feel like I need to do. It's all the vision planning stuff. Yeah. Okay, great. Let's tackle that in one part at a time. Okay. In order to get a more predictable business, you have to perfect the model a little bit. I'm not sure it's been perfected. Like when you do it a dozen times, then you know, it's like, okay, I know all the trappings, I know where all the objections are gonna be, I know where it's gonna fail, I know how to succeed, and you just perfect it, okay? And I wanna make sure that your revenue is where it needs to be to support the three partners and your family, and so that we're kind of taking care of ourselves. Because one of the things that can kill you more than anything else is to become distracted while your gold mine could still be right in front of you and you don't even know it yet, okay? So the only way you're gonna be able to do that is to charge more. Because mm. the way it sounds, you're already working a lot, you're answering the emails, you know, you're doing what you need to do, so there's, you can't do more of it. So the only way you can do it is for bigger clients or bigger engagement. So let's talk about that a little bit. You're a fan or in favor of the retainer slash subscription model. Yeah. Which is take an engagement and break it into parts. And that's an excellent strategy when the clients say, I'm not ready to go the full distance. Right. But I don't like that because at any point in time, this thing could fall apart. Yeah, it's a six month retainer, but they can back out or I can back out. With 30 days notice. Within 30 days notice. Right. So that's not a lot of predictability. So you can plan and hire and get help. So I like to have runway. I'd like to see you have three to six months runway. Not just for you, but for your entire team. Mm. Okay, so you need to go and calculate what that's going to be and make sure that that's there. The way I've been able to do it thus far is I don't shy away from the deliverables. Or what you call the executables? Because that's how I can keep a team going in a way that doesn't kill you where you're managing the project. The only other way you can do this is to be so deep into an organization where they're flying you out and you have multiple strategists working on different, at different sites, whether it's a big enough company where you can be generating a lot of billable hours that way. Mm. I know the big management consulting firms, they do that and they're charging a million, two million, five, ten million dollars worth. Uh, uh, or that's what they're charging to do this kind of work. So how, how you get there, I don't know, I'm working on it myself. I'll let you know as soon as I get there myself. Mm -hmm. But I can see that there's a lot of room for us to grow. In a perfect world, I would like to be doing strategy, just going in and, and facilitation, right? And, and providing them a deck at the end with a, with a handful of solutions and phases once a week in a different part of the, of the country. To me, that's kind of the goal of where I would like to get to. And I think my partners and I are all Would the revenue be there to do that? If we could up our level of clientele and get from, you know, a $10,000 engagement to a $30,000 engagement, I think so. Um, but it would require us to start mining in other industries, right? Other verticals. We kind of know the threshold of our customers. And even on the retainer basis, like I know what is too much. I know right where that sweet spot is. How do you know that? Because we've asked and we've won and we've lost enough. I've won and lost enough jobs now to know like the writing's on the wall. But I'm not happy with the, I'm, I'm not, I'm ready not happy to with that. the answer. So when you go and present a number to your client, Mm -hmm. What number are you floating to them for discovery? 10. Did you just say straight up 10? Yeah, our minimum level of engagement is $10,000. To do discovery. And then some of them say, no problem, let's keep talking. Some of them are like, no, that's not going to work. So 
our minimum level of engagement is $10,000, but before we get into all the numbers, like let me ask you a couple questions. And I ask them some surface level questions because the number's already planted. And then I'll go back to it towards the end and say, listen, now I've, I told you what our minimum level of engagement is. Is that even something that is feasible? I'll continue on the conversation and build more value, but I'll drop that number really early on of that. the conversation. And then I'll let the conversation go on. And then towards the end, I'm like, so what do you think? Okay, answer. here's my actionable tip for you, Aaron. Here's how it goes. I want you to make a few tweaks to what you say. Okay. Okay, you ready? Yep. First thing is, you're gonna say it, and you're gonna bracket a price. And I don't want you to say 10 anymore, I want you to say between 10 to 20. Okay. Okay, and there's a reason why, this is called price bracketing. So 10 looks like a smaller number next to 20. Okay, so it allows them to say, well, he'll probably come in at 15, that's why he said between 10 to 20. Right. And if they say, well, why is that? It's like, well, I don't know what you need yet, and this is what I charge. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to just be quiet. I don't want you to quick pivot because it says I'm not totally comfortable with that number just yet. Just let them be uncomfortable with the silence. And you just sit there and chill. Okay? Like you have the like I'm, like the I have steel blue eyes. <laughs> yeah. No, no, you just, just be quiet oh, like, yeah, hey, I'm just... Right. And is that something that works for you or not? It's, it's kind of like the law from God. That's, the, that's what it is. I, mm -hmm. I just read it off the tablet. You right. know, the stone tablets for Moses, and that was it. Is this something you're interested in? If you're not, don't want to waste your time. Mm -hmm. And just move on, okay? Because in a way, from my point of view, if I ask you for a price and you say, oh, it's this, but then, and then you talk, I just get the feeling that, and it's not even true in your case, that you're not confident about the number. That's when I come in, mm. say my number, and I'll get it for more than you because you just have to just say it and just be okay with saying it. So perhaps for you, it's, it's a two-parter. You were always talking about like language and working on language, right? Mm -hmm. Working on language, the other part is maybe you just have to learn a few more skills as a facilitator to help to draw this out from them. And then you're gonna see the kind of reaction and realize that you're worth way more than that. It's funny too, because I'm not really that comfortable saying the numbers all the time. I don't totally avoid it. There's some people that will just avoid it. I get it. And I've been, I've, I've been on the receiving end where I'm like, just tell me how much it's gonna cost. Right. Just tell me. Right. Um, so I know how frustrating that can be, but it is hard sometimes to ask okay. for money. Now, here's the thing. In my heart of hearts, I know whatever I charge the client, it's worth way more than what I charge. And as you're doing this, and clients are like, that's exactly, wow. Right. And the reactions that, if you're having any of the kind of reactions that I get, People are literally coming up to you, hugging you afterwards, saying, I've been waiting for years to do this kind of vision planning, to have this kind of clarity, to get the teams aligned, uh, to have this kind of insight into this breakthrough. This was really amazing. You're really good at like, converting the energy in the room and getting what we need to talk about out. So, like large uh, multinational corporations pay millions of dollars just to reassure and reaffirm that they're moving in the right direction. They, w they want to be heard. And management is not talking to middle management. Middle management is not talking to people on the front line. People on the front line aren't talking to customers. It's just all this miscommunication. So one of my skills, as it turns out, is I'm a good listener, and I can synthesize information. I can repackage it. So people can then hear their own thoughts said more clearly than they could have said it. Dude, to shadow somebody like you, I'm all about, you know, you're, you're uh what I say, your net worth is your network, right? So like you're the top five people that you, you hang out with. Um, I mean, yeah, I would love the opportunity to, uh, I'll put you on blast, to sit through a strategy session hosted by you. <laughs> with a client. Put me in, coach. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Ace Ventura. <laughs> put me in, coach. So we'll figure that out. But, but I'm just saying like, you're, you're right. I think that if I hear more people start saying $100,000, if I see that and witness it, because it's not even in my world. Well, Remember, let's take small, small my steps. My world is like, steps, oh, twenty five hundred dollars websites. No, I get, it. I get it. And now, so like, I almost feel pressured by guys like you, by Sean, by Ben, and everybody else that's doing it to keep raising the numbers, so you feel like there's still something to chase, right. so that the ceiling is high enough for you to like, there's something to aspire to. So the numbers that I quote for people now for doing strategy work is between thirty to fifty, and soon it'll be thirty to eighty and then 50 to 100, and I'm just gonna keep bumping out the brackets. Right. Because the more of this we do, um, the more proof that I have 
in case somebody wants to say, well, I'm not sure. I'm like, okay, well, you can look at these companies. I mean, I think initially you mentioned like, oh, charge 10K for it or something. You said, just say that and um, it's worked. This is what you're gonna say now. Uh, when, when somebody asks you this, you're gonna say, I charge between 10 to $20,000 to do discovery session. That's one day's worth of work. After which I'll give you documentation and I will help you to define your brand, who your customers are, and help you prioritize your goals in alignment with your business goals. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in doing, let me know. And then I shut up. No, I don't say anything. Yeah. Do you have any questions? That's it. I also don't like the idea that um, in some cases you pay for your own travel. That has to be extra. Yeah. So some cases. So they're, they're like, hey, that sounds yeah. great. Great, so you're in Portland, um, you know, I don't need to fly first class. I like saying it like that. Yeah, that's what I did. Right, I don't need to fly night, first yeah. class, uh, but you do need to put me up and then I'll fly out with my team and I need two people there, myself and my partner, and we'll run this thing and we'll, we'll have an agenda sent, sent to you the day before. The only reason why I think you don't fully feel confident going and asking for that yet is because maybe you haven't been able to uncover and produce the things that we've been able to produce. I'm telling you that every time I do it now for the same client, they're like, okay, let's do it again. And each time they're like, wow, that was amazing. That was great. Uh, literally, this is what one of my clients called me and said to me, Chris, I don't know what you did. Did you slip some kind of um, stimulant in the beverages? Because people were walking away like high. They were high. They had so much energy. They're like, wow. You can't put a price on clarity and I've had a hard time selling clarity, but that's ultimately what discovery is. It's like real time, clarity and for companies that need that they will pay a lot of money for it well don't we all need it we all hell yeah i mean for have. life and business that's, right. <laughs> that's why you have a business coach you have a therapist you have a family therapist you have a tennis coach it's just like right. what am i doing wrong right. because what we want to do is to make progress tying it back into the whole happiness thing mm. we want to make progress and we want to feel like we have a, we want to be in control yeah those are two very important things that you need to trade in so if you help people figure that out, you're going to do really well. How is it best to ask for referrals? So I'm going out to a hyper-qualified customer in a couple hours, right? And he, I know the referrals of the people that are in his sphere of influence, his top five, are totally the types of customers that we want to work with, right? Yeah. So how should I go and approach him and say, hey man. I think timing is key on this people are busy. So the thing that you can do is to think about when the highest point of interaction and value is being created and exchanged, then ask shortly thereafter. Mm. So if you're still selling the guy and looking to close, the time to ask for referrals is not good. How long after you've been gone and everybody's gone back to their lives, asking the referral then, it's just, um, you know, it's, it's not hot, it's not urgent anymore. Right. So I would say somewhere during the facilitation, the discovery, shortly thereafter when you document it and you give it to them and like, you know, uh, here's the thing, I wanna walk you through it. At the end of it, they're like, well, great job, Aaron. It's like, you know what, I really appreciate your business. I am trying to grow my practice. So if you know somebody that could use this, that would appreciate mm -hmm. this, I, I would feel grateful if you would recommend us. Okay, so during the, I like that. Right, great so you have to find when it's like really tight and everybody wants to hug each other, right. that's the moment and you yeah. mention it. It's like you, don't, you, you ask the girl for the second date when things are going really well, not right after the fight. Uh, referrals don't have to hap happen outside the company. It can happen inside the company. Okay? They can refer you to other departments within a big enough organization. Mm. So you can also do a little follow-up. It could be a handwritten note. Love doing the work together. Um, if any other teams need this, please let me know. So what's the second part, the two-part question? How can I get discovered more? Not even from an SEO standpoint, but really just inbound in general. Like how can I get people filling out a form on a website saying, I'm interested in your services? I get it. There's a couple of things here. I'm trying to retrace my steps because I'm not telling you I'm an inbound expert either. But whatever we're doing is working really well for us. I'm trying to like deconstruct and reconstruct what's happened for us. I'm gonna suggest this and then you just think about it for a second before you react, okay? is you don't want to get into deliverables. But the deliverables is the sizzle, right? It's the attraction. You, you've been That's doing they, the steak. 
yet everyone reaches out and says I need a new yeah. website and then I convert them into strategy. Right, so, okay, so, you. so you're doing that part and then somebody else builds the site. It may be great, it may not be. But here's the thing, and here's how we're positioned our own agency, is I say there's this strategic divide between strategy conceived and strategy realized. So you can have a great strategy, a great plan, but if it isn't executed well, it's a bad strategy. Mm. Or, or somebody says there was no such thing as bad concepts. All the concepts are great, there's just bad execution. Mm. It just wasn't executed properly. Now, take for example, the work we've done for Hudson Pacific. It's a big real estate developer, and we've done some pretty good looking websites. And at the bottom of each is a design by blind. And so people in the real estate space is not that big. Meaning other brokers see the site, they see the marketing materials, they see the messaging. It looks good, it sounds different. It really carves out a space. And so then that becomes our calling card. Mm. So what I'm gonna say to you is, you don't need to be in the deliverables space as a service company but you may want to invest in like three really good clients where you either do the work or manage it really tightly so that it comes back to you. Mm. That becomes your calling card. Because let's look at it. I love it. Dude. You're wearing Nikes. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm wearing Converse shoes. And we're wearing this not because of a philosophy necessarily or a, an innovative manufacturing technique. It's because it looks good on your feet and it's a very stylish design. Now there's a lot of other factors that go into it. But you're selling something, but we're, we need the shoe. We actually, I, now that I think about it, I already have projects that I can showcase to leverage. So I just make them sexy. Yeah. I would even do them at, to, at break even or at a loss. And normally I would never even say that. Right. Just make them drop dead gorgeous. Okay. So, Aaron, you were talking about networking. And I want to just tell you a little personal story because when you talked about your wife, questioning why you're at the bar. <laughs> I get that. Because for guys like <coughs> us, we don't know exactly what's going to lead to something. Right. So it's planting lots of seeds or casting lots of lines in the water waiting for a fish to bite. So I want to tell a little bit of a story. And we had this great meeting and an opportunity presented itself that I could not have designed nor asked for in the sense that they were talking about like, what do we do about the brand moving forward? I said, actually, if you don't mind, you guys, this is kind of what I do. I help to facilitate. Would you guys like to do this? Like, yeah, yeah, what needs to be done? So that's great. Let's go in the other room. Let's get some uh, big post-it pads. And actually, I have one in my car because we just did a workshop, <laughs> right? I literally had it, yeah. put it up all over the place, and we started to facilitate. And the reaction I got was, wow, this is the kind of planning vision that I've been wanting to do for the last six years, and we're finally able to do it. This is awesome. Thank you. It's been a year later. It's a half million dollars worth of work. I'm telling you this story not because I want to brag about the numbers, but it's just about understanding this idea of networking. People think I'm going to run into you at a bar and I'm going to, I have an agenda. I want to get something from you and you want something, but I don't care what you want or what your needs are. And I just want to sell this thing here. I just tried to give. And if opportunity pushes itself to the surface and I'm like, great, I will pick that up. I can do this. Wow. We're so excited to do this work with you. I'm like, I am too, because I think I can do some really great things. Long story short, if you approach these kind of networking uh, events as I'm here just to help and see if there's a good fit with people, and if there is, I'll follow up with it. If not, I'll recommend somebody. That's the story I tell my wife. Yeah. Every time she's like, are you going to that thing? I'm like, should I stay home or should I go? She's yeah. like, you should go. Because yeah. that's the thing that other people in your organization cannot do. It's like 10 to seven, we gotta get you to the airport. Yeah. So I appreciate you coming by. This is Aaron Pearson. How do people get a hold of you on social media? Uh, just, I mean, Twitter's probably my favorite. Twitter? Yeah, so uh, AP underscore creative. You can hit me up on AaronPearson.com, and that's just kind of my podcast. It's my books. It's like me, not your really, personal brand. It's my personal self. And then our agency site, if you're curious to check that out, it's Vitals, uh, like we check Vitals, uh, V I T A L S dot agency. Dude, thank you, Chris.